Hello, and welcome to HR Analytics 101. My name is John, and today we're going to cover the very basics of column selection and filtering for data frames in R. We'll lay out the logic today, and that will make it easier to understand the more advanced and often easier techniques that we'll cover in later videos. If you're totally new to data frames in R, please check out our earlier video called R Data Frames for the Total Beginner. We'll start by first assigning the empty cars data that comes with R to a new object called D. We can view the data frame with the view command using a capital V or just typing D on the console line. The last bit of prep is to take those row names on the left and just make those a column in our data frame. It's better to have key information about a data frame in the data frame itself instead of the row names because the row name information can get lost as you work with your data. To add that, we'll type the name of the data frame, a dollar sign, and the name of our new column, and then assign the row names to that new column. Then, we'll just assign null to the row names because we don't need that information duplicated. As we discussed in the previous video, you can refer to columns using either numbers or the names. I'll give you a quick refresher on using numbers to select the columns, but generally it's better to use names. The first thing we'll do is rearrange the columns so that our new model column appears first. If we type dim D, we see that we have 12 columns. Since models is last, we know that it's in the 12th spot. We'll create a new data frame called D2 using D as the basis, the brackets, and then nothing in the first spot to indicate that we want all the rows. For the columns, we'll use the C function to combine the numbers of all the columns in the order we want. We'll start with the 12 because that's the model column, followed by 2 through 11. When we type D2 into the console, we see that our data frame has the new order of the columns. We can also select columns based on the names. For example, if I want to get just the model and the number of cylinders, we would use just those quoted names in our data frame statement. Using the names for just a few columns is okay, but names can be a pain if you have a whole bunch. There are some easier ways of dealing with names using the dplyr package, but for now, if you need to type a whole set of names, you could just use a little shortcut using the dput function. If I just type names D, I would get the text back, but I can't really use it in any form directly with R. However, if I apply the dput function to that same names D statement, you can see that I get the standard C style format, and then I can just copy that and change the order manually. Here, I'll just shift the horsepower location to show you what I mean. Note that in this statement, the new order is just kicked to the console. It does not change the order of the columns in the data frame in place. If I want to get a new data frame with that column order, I need to assign that output to a variable. We can also sort the row names alphabetically using the sort function and then use that output to set the column order. Finally, I want to show you how to select columns using the logical values true and false. To keep things simple, let's just first create another data frame called D3 with just the first five columns. Now let's suppose we want the first and second columns only. Instead of using numbers or names like before, we can do this using a vector of logicals, putting true in the first two positions and false in the other three. R will just return those columns corresponding with a true value. Remember to use all caps. I can also do the same thing using just T's and F's to save the typing. Now, that might not seem very useful, but we can actually use that same approach to create tests that return logic outputs and then select our columns that way. For example, suppose I only want those columns that start with the letter D. Here, I would use the string subset function from the stringer package, passing it the names of the variables in my data frame, starting with the first letter, that's why I put a one there, and then ending also with that first letter, so I add another one, and that will just return the first letter. This gives me a vector of the first letters of each of the columns. I can use the output then to test which ones equal D. I'll use the double equals function as a logical test for equals. The result will give me a vector of trues and falses. Then, I can use that logical vector to select my columns. With larger data frames and longer names, this kind of logical selection approach can be very handy. As we discussed in the earlier video, you can use numbers in the row position in the data frame to retrieve specific rows. For example, if I want to select rows 2 and 3 from our D2 data frame, I can just put those numbers in the first position and leave the column space blank to indicate that we want all columns. 
In your analytics work, though, you are generally not going to be hand-selecting rows the same way you might select specific columns. Instead, you'll be applying some logical tests. For example, suppose we only want to filter down to just those rows with a 6 in the cylinder column. We'll get this using the name of our data frame, a dollar sign, and the column name, and then a double equals symbol for our logical test. And finally, the values we are testing for. When we run that, you can see that we get back a logical vector with true for the rows with six cylinders and false for everything else. We can then just plug this statement directly into our data frame statement in that rows position, a comma, and then put nothing after the comma to select all of the columns. We can also get the same thing if we assign the result of our test to a variable and then place the variable in the rows position. Here, I will assign that to an index variable, and, and then plug that variable in. Again, remember that this result is just returned to the console and does not change the underlying data frame. If you want to keep the results as another data frame, you need to assign it to another object. Here, I will put that information in a new data frame object called d underscore cylinders underscore six. Then, if I want to see that result again, I can just refer to that object. Filtering on a single variable is nice, but what about using multiple variables? For example, suppose we want to filter down to just those rows where we have eight cylinders and the horsepower is less than 200. To do this, we just combine the two conditions into a single statement. First, we have our test for cylinder equals eight. Then, we also have a test for whether the horsepower is less than 200. Now, I can combine them into a joint condition by putting an ampersand symbol in between, which just means and. I can either then put this statement directly into my data frame statement, like so, or I can assign that output to a new variable like we did before and then stick the name of this variable into the rows location. In both cases, we get the same result, just the rows with eight cylinders and horsepower less than 200. Finally, we can also filter rows on text values, similar to what we did before with the column names. Let's take a look at our data again, and suppose we want to filter to models with just Merck for Mercedes in them. We can use the string detect function from the stringer package. In the first position in this function, we put the name of the vector we want to look through. So here, we're going to do d2 dollar sign model. In the second position, we put the text we're searching for. Here, merc. This then returns a vector of trues and falses to use in our data frame statement. First, I can use it directly, like so. Or, I can again assign that logical vector result to a new variable and then plug in the new variable into the data frame statement. That's it for today's basic tutorial on column selection and row filtering with R. Please give a thumbs up if this video was helpful, and please also leave comments about other videos you would like to see so I can make things that are useful. Please be sure to visit hranalytics101.com and look for other upcoming videos here in this channel. Thanks for watching.